So, I guess I'm live now. Anyways. So, I'm here to show off. At Westlake High School, we have a, a lot of cool extracurricular programs. I decided with my friends Joseph, June, and Sam Hollenbeck to start the Accessible Programming Club. It's a Swift Development Club. And I'd like to show everyone watching this live stream, mostly new members of the Accessible Programming Club, or GitHub members who review this game. We're submitting it to the GitHub Game Off, a game development competition. Our new game. Anyways, let's. I'm just gonna live stream this. Okay, anyways, I think it's working. So I'm just gonna launch, delete this breakpoint. Don't want it breaking when I initialize the game scene. And so I'm just gonna launch the game. You can play it. But first, if there's any questions at all, you should put that in the chat. It's like, I think it's to the right of the video window. You can go see that now. But anyways, let's get right into it. So this is our menu screen. It says Immolation Organization. That's the name of the game. And I'm going to read the help page. So pretty much it says, in Immolation Organization you moderate a, mo a mob of baddies, these guys, with the intent of hacking away at and destroying alien spacecrafts. That include, this includes two of the three words, hacking, modding, and augmenting, which were the theme of this year's Game Off. So that's what our game is about. You dispatch these guys, you destroy these guys, and you do so by pointing at and touching places for the mob to travel. They'll always deteriorate and diminish the spacecrafts, but depending on who's bigger, the mob or the spacecrafts, they will either enlarge or shrink. So, I'm just gonna play this. Okay, so. Anyways, so pretty much have to go up to the enemies and attack them, like shown. Yes! It's not that hard of a game. Anyways, you die when your player attack power is actually exponentially decaying, so it, you die slower when you get smaller. So, you die when that rounds down to zero. Of course, it'll never reach zero, because it's in floating point format internally, but... So I'm just going to occasionally look at the chat, see if you guys have any questions. You should definitely put something there if you have any questions about how I made the game. I will answer it in the video. There's a bit of jumps during the game, but still fun. In my opinion, at least. I'm gonna see if I can get to 100 here. Whoa, 170! That's pretty good! I'd say. It's definitely not an easy game, though. I've just been playing it for the past four days or so. Testing. Thank you. 
This is, oh yeah, I forgot to say, um, just a little disclaimer, we didn't write the music. We actually rely on a number of creative works, some of which got unused in the final product, but they still require attribution because they were vital in our development process. Fiber 2D, it's a rewrite of Cocos 2D, the graphics library a lot of you have probably heard of, in Swift by... Oh my gosh, I forgot his name. Whoops. Anyways. Gotitem.mp3. It was like this one-up kind of noise we used for when you killed an alien, but we decided to keep it out of the final product. And finally, the music Odyssey is by Kevin MacLeod. He makes a lot of Creative Commons music. Oh, I'm not doing so good. I'm not sure I can make it back to 170 or so. <laughs> Mark Thompson says, eh, hi. Thank you, Mark Thompson. I appreciate it. Keeping the comment section alive. Remember, if you guys have any questions at all about the development process, feel free to ask. I'm probably just going to show off the source code, scroll through, but you can always see it at our GitHub page in the description. We very strictly want to be compatible with license that the Swift open source project uses. Oh, it's Nikolai. Yeah, I know him. He's, he's one of my friends. Sorry. Um, Mark Thompson is Nikolai. Um, um, what was I saying? Anyways, yeah, we are very strict about being, about using a compatible license with the Swift open source project, an Apache 2.0 license with a runtime exception that allows you to link with our pro, dynamically link with our programs and license it whatever you want, or you have to be compliant with Apache 2.0, which pretty much just requires attribution and then it has an express patent grant. Not that this is, this game is especially functional, but... Um, oh yeah, right now is about when the stream sh I when I really intended to start the stream, so I just want to welcome everyone who came here on time. Sorry, I just couldn't wait to start. So, when you get here, I'm already intensely playing Immolation Organization. Probably gonna show off the code after a few minutes. But as I said, it's always on GitHub. Seven. 
If you're wondering how we're making the mob of people, and why they're all spawning in one place, it's because we're using a sprite kit particle effect. I actually modified it from confetti. But we're using our old gym character that Sam Hollenbeck designed for our last game, Death Dodger. He's tinted green, though. Because he's, like, alien. So, my personal theory is... Yeah, I know I'm one of the developers, but... Hello, Internet. Welcome to Game Theory. I think that Immolation Organization is kind of a precursor or prequel to our last game, Death Dodger. Because the thing is, it's a mob of characters in space, in this one, that are constantly disappearing and falling away, where they're obviously not being killed. I mean, they might be suffocating, but in that case, they'd be, like, their bodies floating away. And there's not. So, they must be going somewhere. So maybe they're falling on planets in which the aliens are throwing swords at them once they land on planets. So it's like... So it's like... Death Dodger is what's happening to all these characters who fall off the corner. And there's a lot of them. So maybe this is like intergalactic, sped up, Death Dodger precursor. It's just... That's what I think. Anyways, if you're not sure what Death Dodger is, you should go see the old advertisement on also on this channel. It's another game that the Westlake APC made before we were the Westlake APC. We were just operating up, um, operating in Joseph Jin's house. Yes, 113. I didn't even notice. So, don't know how long I'm gonna keep this going. Probably until like 5:30, 5:40 about. If you're wondering why we're doing this, because we haven't done this for any previous game releases, it's because we're submitting to the GitHub Game Off, as I said earlier, and um, the people reviewing the GitHub Game Off, of course they want to try your games, but they just want to, like, see video footage. They want to see you play them for your submission, so that's part of the form. And so I'm just going to submit the link to this recorded live stream after the fact. Eli, we should start a game with a 2D game engine that lets you play as one of the baddies. Well, what we, what we intended with the baddies is, like, these are a bunch of rioter kind of people that are, like, tearing apart aliens. So these are supposed to be the baddies. As we say. So it's kind of like... Hey, Nikolai, we already did it. Isn't that cool? Oh, and by the way, I don't know if you have, like, a whole team of people that are doing- that are running your game off behind the scenes, but if this is, like, you, highly Riley, if that's how you pronounce your name. Could it move left and right and move the screen view with it? Oh, so- oh, I thought he was talking about, like, my live stream. Are you talking about making a scroller kind of game, Nikolai? Because that would be a good idea. I might be completely misinterpreting what he's saying, I have no idea. There, I did it. It's on a 30 sec- This video is on a 30 second delay, but yes, I did the dab. <laughs> Nikolai asked me to do a dab, and so I, yes, I did. 
You know what, why not? Let's keep this... Let's keep this going until like 6, why not? I'm just gonna... Maybe, I don't know, it might end sooner. Never know. Oh. Oh, yeah, you can't really catch the fast aliens. It's like, what's their point in the game? I'm not exactly sure. Because at first I was like, wait, do they even do anything? Like, if you're large enough, the enemies stop hurting you. Like, they just don't hurt you anymore. Just like, we don't want to make it so that you can buy achievements and stuff that give you extra advantage in future runs. But we just want to give you a slight advantage when you get really far up. So we made it so that, um, the enemies don't hurt you once you're larger than them. And by larger than them, well, it's a strange scale. I can show you an Xcode. I can go back to the full screen view after a moment. fast ones. Oh, maybe I can claim both of these. Yes! High score. might be about the time to quit. Wait, but maybe I should display the game over feature. Let's let's show you what that is. I'm just gonna die here. It'll take a while because exponential decay, it's actually kind of hard to lose this game, but you know. Dang it! I'm killing so many enemies just by staying in the corner. Thought this would be a good strategy to die. No, 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 I can't have another enemy. No, 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 what? Okay. Getting down to 34. 30? five power. And so after I show off the game over screen, I'm actually going to show you how this whole thing works in some of the compromises we made in development. Because that's always a part of it. Okay, maybe I'm just going to brush this guy so that I speed up the death process. Yes! Militia terminated. And so... These guys, th your character vanishes, you can see, like, right... Oh, this is so weird, I can't point at the screen because it wouldn't show up that way for you. But anyways, like, right there, your guy termin- your guy disappears, and then all the enemies drift off screen and get removed. So it says, Militia Terminated, tap to restart. I'm actually not going to, because I'm going to show off the code right now. 
So, some this is an exclusive tour, something that the Mark comments won't give you. Um, so this is just our import statements. We support wash kit. And this was, yeah, this part was just boilerplate, but anyways, um, as we actually, for the enemies, we made a custom extension of the SK Sprite Node class that has an internal deterioration state. Um, I don't know why we put a zero right here, because we just, we wanted to, anyways. Oh yeah, because we set that to 0 0.995. But anyways, um, we have a deterioration rate, that's how many, how much health it loses every, um, that's how much health it loses every, um, oh wait, no, that's how, what its health is multiplied by every frame, and this is just, this is to make sure that it does, isn't removed immediately after it spawns, if, and so it has a three second lenience period before it gets removed for being off screen. We remove enemies off screen and then spawn more, just just so you know. Anyways, um, um, this has, this stores the, a reference to the scene that contains it. It's a member, it's an extension, or it's a variable of the game scene class. You can see it's defined down here. This is deterioration. And so it changes the sprite if, it, if the, um, health passes through an integer value. So then it actually multiplies the internal health by a deterioration rate. Um, this is just variables. Um, yeah. This is to determine whether users have enabled spinny stuff in settings. We have always put this as an easter egg in our games. Then again, we haven't been around long, so you can always, you can always make the, um, little, it's hard to explain, these little app icon shape rainbow things appear when you tap, everywhere you tap, and drag your finger. The code for actually spawning these spinny things is down here in the platform specific extensions. But, back up. Um... So we initialize the character. As we said, you are the bad guys. Delete this breakpoint. Um, just gonna actually go into breakpoint. Wait, is this breakpoint view? I don't even know. Yes, this is breakpoint view, so I can just clear them um, whenever they show up here. Um, initialize the labels, put them in position. Those were the score labels, as you were seeing in the corner. Oh. I just realized I didn't. Well, that was. You couldn't see my screen that whole time. Anyways, I'm gonna go back through. Anyways, this is the SK enemy node, the extension to SK sprite node. These are our import statements, deterioration rate. Um, if it passes through an integer deterioration, an integer. If the health, if the health rounded, if the rounded version of the health passes through an integer, like if the health passes through an integer when being multiplied by the deterioration rate, it changes the icon, it changes the sprite. I'm just going to make sure that it's, yeah, definitely works. Um, it changes sprite, and so then it multiplies by the, in the internal health by the deterioration rate. Um, this is the game scene class as referenced up here in the game scene reference. This is where all everything happens. This is initialized in game the game view controller and all of these extensions. You can see it. Wait, that's not. That's just build stuff. Anyways, um. So this is initializing all the variables. This puts the labels into place. We're actually using an SKS file to position most everything, including music. And this is the kill sound, which is really the unused um. 
the unused one up sound. And if the OS is watch OS, we make all the labels and the death screen hidden because it doesn't show up on the tiny screen anyways. So this is just spinny node set up stuff. Also boilerplate. Anyways, um this is we initialize a texture matrix from the texture atlas that has all these texture wait, no, that's the app icon. This is all the textures for the sprites. And so we use a code space sprite enemy number dash stage. And so that makes it easy to do it with a for loop and sw swift um, template strings to initialize it that way. So that's, that's cool. But the thing is, it starts at 1. The enemy starts at 1. Number starts at 1. So we just need to do an in one enemy in one dot 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 three for the range of values and then when we're putting it in the array we put it at that value at that enemy value minus one just to make it start at zero anyways I don't know why we chose that but mm -hmm. um spinning node configuration this is our broken Pythagorean theorem code you might have noticed that he goes faster in some directions than other directions that is because I believe this is broken. Y'all get hubbers. If you can fix this, please do. It's supposed to make it go at a constant speed, but it's obviously not doing that right now. Wait. Oh, wait, no, 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 that's right. Anyways, um, this is, deteriorates the player. Um... And as I was saying, if the bad guy, its particle birth rate times 5 is less than the enemy's health, that's how we determine whether it's bigger. It's kind of arbitrary, but, you know, it works in the final game. Then we multiply it by 0 0.999 for every enemy that it intersects. But it's constantly deteriorating, so you can't just sit in a cor corner and survive. You'd survive longer if you really stink at the game but you can't just sit in a quarter and survive. Um, I'm going to get a few, full view of the code base. This is how enemies spawn. This is the enemy spawner done by Joseph Jin, thankfully. Um, I don't understand any of this stuff, and I would not like to tune all these numbers. Because the thing is... For me, he makes it cross-platform, which is beautiful. I can test it anywhere. But the thing is, there's a lot of stuff you have to do to make sure it's on the right place on every screen size. Moving on. <laughs> so this just determines enemy position. Um, in each direction, it can move. And the move enemy action and so it and so then we just add the enemy to the enemy array in self and then we enemy dot enemy dot run the series of actions that it's supposed to do before it dies either by player or by going off the side of the screen um check death player died it's like it this or player died it's um it's really for convenience the player died variable is actually used in the game but the thing is this in one instance is for convenience it's so that we can like immediately make the player die for testing if we set that to true in the code we can just immediately make the player die and so we have otherwise if Rounding down the particle birth rate times 100 is zero. Then we set it. We, then we set it. It's a double, so we set it entirely to zero. And then we do all this game over stuff, and we make the over screen pop up, and we make. Yeah. Anyways, um, the restart function again. Joseph Jin did this. For every enemy, it makes them. 
deteriorate and then um, deteriorate once for some reason we have this call I'm not sure why I'd have to ask him um, Steven Shu says what a nerd thank you Steven I appreciate the compliment I wasn't expecting you to turn in tune into the live stream anyways um so then it removes the, all the enemies from the enemy array and then it makes it so that the player did not die and then it does all the stuff to reset it it says the bad sets the bad guy scale and then it has sets the particle birth rate which is actually the source of score to 0.5 which is like 50 as it shows up on the screen um and it sets its position to the center of the screen and then it makes the game over screen scale down. But it's this really cool animation. Because it's like, as soon as the over screen scales down, the, the player is just there. You never see it pop up. Which is, I think that's really cool. Uh, I appreciate that Joseph did that. Um, this is background music. It makes it play, what, replay it when you um, restart. And it respawns enemies for you. Anyway, so this this score update is a helper function used in up, the update message in the update method. Anyway, so these are all called in a row: player deter, check death, um, and wait, did I did I show you guys remove off screen enemies? Um, this so for enemy in inter- enemy array, if the enemy intersects self and um, the time inter- time interval since the enemy's birth is greater than three. So pretty much what this means is if now is at least three seconds after the enemy after the enemy was born, so it's like if it was born off screen and it's time to go on screen, three seconds to be exact, um, before it will get removed for not being on the screen for not intersecting the screen. And so in that case it Swift doesn't have an index of method, so we did at enemy array dot index where um, the enemy is this enemy specifically in the array. Um, then it removes the so it removes it from the array. Then it removes it from uh, from the scene, and then it spawns one more enemy, pretty much. So this is all in an effort to like this is um. Also, on completion, this thing does self.spawn enemies. So this is all in an effort to make sure that, um, this is all in an effort to make sure there's a constant number of enemies. So it's like, if one falls off screen, spawn another one. If it, if its action ends, spawn, you spawn another one. You remove it from the parent and you spawn another one. If it's, um, if it's killed, you can see up here, um, this is the one time where game scene is used. Wait, no. A game scene is also used down here. Anyways, so this adds 25 points to the score when the enemy dies, but then you just spawn another one. Um, why does Steven Shu keep saying dab? Anyways, um... If the kills are zero, if you've killed no enemies, it's red. If you killed less than or equal to ten, it's white. You can s- rewind. I won't care. Go see that happen. And once you kill ten enemies, the label turns green. And so when you have like less than five, when you have less than five people in your mob, the label is red. The um, player attack power is red, and when you have less than 50, it's white, and when you have, or less than or equal to 50, and less than or equal to 5, sorry, me, um, it's white, and otherwise it's just green. Don't know why we have this statement. I guess that's unnecessary. We can remove that. It's just basic ar- ar- arithmetic proof that it will never happen. But anyways, um, so we deter the player, we update we deter the player and um, make his score lower, then we do a score update, then we do check death, um, then we update the scoreboard, the two labels in the corner, then we check whether the player died, 
then we remove off-screen enemies. Player deter also, it'll, it's also the controller that deletes the, or that deteriorates the enemies. Let's see, up here, yeah, it, this is also enemy deterioration. Yeah, it also deteriorates the enemy if you're intersecting it, regardless. But anyways, we made a lot of tweaks to difficulty, and this sets scene size based on screen size, because apparently Apple doesn't do, do that for you. We learned that the hard way, when the screen didn't match up with the the canvas, the scene size. It took us a long time to figure out what was happening, and it was not fun. Anyways, um, this is platform-specific code. It calls the move bad guys method, which was that broken, um, which was that broken Pythagorean theorem thing that I was showing you guys earlier. Again, if you can fix that, I very much appreciate it. Um, And also, it restarts if you're tapping the over screen. Well, anyways, um, this doesn't have syntax highlighting because it's not enabled. We have preprocessor here, so that this is only run it. So that this extension, this extension, it's pretty much like what a, an extension is in Swift. Is sorry if I explain this incorrectly, but it's like you can take a class and you write an implementing class with the same name that overrides it in all contexts. So it's pretty much here. There's um, this game scene extension which replaces the class game scene and has all the members of the class game scene is only available on iOS and tvOS. This one's only available on macOS. And only, it only compiles for that target and apparently it only lints and does syntax highlighting for that target. So like if I switch to iOS right now supposed to, and I build it right now it would probably start doing syntax highlighting. No? Well yeah, there. Um, anyways that's it guys probably going to end the live stream right now. Um, how do I do that? Let's see, stop streaming. Bye!